All right, good morning. It's Brother Chris Hannon, Grace Baptist Church, Bloomingdale, Georgia. Amen. Land of the free, home of the brave. Amen. Um, and today I want to talk about something. Uh, someone said when they go to church, uh, they said that uh, they wanted to be lifted up. Uh, and I know what they meant. Uh, they wanted, they mean uh, to feel better about their um, situation. Maybe something's hindering them and they want to feel better. Nothing wrong with wanting to feel better. Um, uh, they, uh, when they say they want to be lifted up, uh, maybe there's some society issues and they want to be lifted up above those. They want some spiritual help. They want something that, you know, give them a better out outlook, better attitude uh, as they look around society, right? And so they, I understand they want to be lifted up when they come to church uh, because of what they're seeing, right? They're already down about what they're seeing, so they don't want to come here and see the same thing. Then uh, they, want to, they want to be lifted up in the sense of their self. They, uh, again, they want to have some hope within them. Uh, to spread hope, you got to have hope, amen? You're not going to spread hope if you're not hopeful yourself. So they want to be lifted up in that regard, and I understand that. That's, uh, those things in and of themselves are not wrong. Uh, uh, I know the Bible says, Jesus Christ said, if I be lifted up, amen, uh, the primary, the primary uh, person to be lifted up in our midst is the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Uh, not our singing, although, you know, we're supposed to lift up our voices in song to him, amen. But our song should glorify him. It should never be, uh, and our singing, it should never be where, uh, oh, we're singing so great that that person's singing so great. Well, we lose fat, we lose focus on who they're singing about. Amen? Because sometimes that can happen. We get all caught up with the person that's, they got a wonderful voice and the song and everything else, but they never let us lose sight of who they are singing about. Amen? For without him, you know what? The song is worthless. Right? And so I understand, I understand. But the problem is when p some people do get up and they lift up themselves. That, that we have a problem. Uh, Jesus, uh, the Lord, let me just say, in order, uh, you have to be, uh, the Lord will have to do the real lifting. Amen? Uh, I'm not one of those we lift up when it comes to, especially our spiritual uh, situation. Uh, when you're lost, let me just, um, uh, lifting, or as they say, lifting yourself up by your own bootstraps is not going to help your spiritual condition. Amen? Oh, we sang that song this morning, Love Lifted Me, Amen. Uh, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, right? Uh, sinking to rise no more, but the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, and from the waters he lifted me, right? Love lifted me, Amen. Uh, and that's what must take place. But you have to be in a position to be lifted up. Uh, now, now, go if you would to Psalm 113, and you'll see where the psalmist says this. Psalm 113, look at verse 7. Psalm 113, verse 7, he says, He raiseth up the poor out of the dust, and lifteth the needy out of the dunghill. Amen. That's the Lord's work. Amen. Now, there's certain things, you know, what the Lord expects us to do. You know what? He says he blesses works. And you know what he expects you to do? Get out there and work if you can work. Amen. Right? He expects you to do some things. You know what I mean? Uh, I remember Moses was praying one time in the Old Testament. God said, why are you praying? Get up. Go forward. I done told you what to do. Get up. Let me tell you, if God told you what to do, amen, uh, it's time to quit praying about it and start doing it. Amen? amen? That's right. And so I know there's some things that we're supposed to do and we can do because, because the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthens me. Amen? So there are some things that God expects you to do, and God said, I'll help you through Christ Jesus. There's no temptation taken, but such as common to man. Uh, 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 and God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will, with the temptation, make a way. Amen, that you may be able to bear. I'm glad God makes way in temptation, aren't you? Amen. And so, uh, so we have that when we understand that this, this, under, this uh, the psalmist writer, he understands that God lifts him up. Look if you will at Psalm 147. Psalm 147, and if you will, at verse 6, it says, The Lord lifteth up the meek. He cast it down the wicked to the ground. Now, the Lord lifted up, a whole lot of it has to do with this right here. You can't be lifted up with pride and expect the Lord to put, lift you up. Amen. Matter of fact, let me tell you, if you lift it up with pride, the Lord's going to put you down. Amen. Uh, uh, pride go for destruction and a haughty spirit before what? Fall. Uh, let me tell you something. The, uh, uh, we, we, we shorten that verse to say this right here. When you hear somebody say this, Watch this. 
watch this. <laughs> and that usually, that usually fulfills that verse. <laughs> watch this. <laughs> it's usually when somebody, when somebody says watch this, somebody fixing to, <laughs> fixing to make a mess or something. But I want you to notice right here, uh, the Lord will lift you up. And you know what? Christ is the only person that can lift you up. And you have to be in the right position. That's what we're going to be talking about. You have to be in the right position. Uh, go, if you will, uh, go, if you will, to Proverbs chapter 30. Proverbs chapter 30, and I'm going to show you something. Proverbs chapter 30. Proverbs chapter 30. There's some things that Solomon says here. Uh, and he says this, and let me tell you, let me tell you again about pride. I mean, the pride will hinder from God lifting you up. Because you're already lifted up. Look what it says here in Proverbs chapter 30. And look what it says, verse 11. There's a generation that curses this father and mother. Let me tell you something. You know, that's bad business. Because you know what? You know when the first one of the first commandments God gave? Honor your father and mother. He said, that's the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee that thou mightest live long on the earth. And you know, I've said it before, I believe some young people have shortened their own lives by disobedient to what their mom and daddy said. Let me tell you something, mom and daddy, they'll always be looking out for your safety even when you're not looking out for it. Yep. Amen. Amen. They'll always, that, that, let me tell you, they've been having to do it longer. Yep. Amen. Especially young men. Uh, somebody, I, was, I saw a thing on social media not too long ago. It said, this is why women outlive men. And it showed a little boy. And it showed like the ocean. And he was like in San Francisco on one of them really super steep hills. And he's probably looked like he's about five to seven years old. And he's on a skateboard fixing to go down. <laughs> That's it. Then it showed a guy, a, a, a grown man on a, motor, I mean, a, 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 bi a bicycle, right? And he's at the edge of a mountain, and it shows like there's a little path to go down the mountain, and it shows he's fixing to go off the edge. And the caption reads, this is why women live longer than men. <laughs> and I was like, that's exactly right. Remember I told you all the life of a man, right? Remember I said, it's, it's what? What's the first thing? Thrills, remember I told you all, thrills? Spills and what? Huh? Spills. No, th thrills, spills, pills, and wheels. <laughs> that's, a, that's the life of a guy. Thrills, spills, pills, and wheels. All right? Not, not wheels, not W H E E L S. I'm talking about W I L I uh, W I L S. Wheels, because you're leaving everything behind. But uh, Proverbs chapter 30 again says, Generation that curses father and mother and doth not bless his, uh, uh, curses father rather than doth not bless his mother. You know what that is? That's a lack of respect. Uh, and that's pride. Look at this. There's a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet are not washed from their filthiness. You know what that is? That's self righteousness. Look at verse 13. There's a generation, uh, oh, oh, how lofty are their eyes and their eyelids are lifted up. There's pride again. Uh, verse 14, there's a generation whose teeth are as swords and their jaw teeth as knives to devour the poor from the earth and the needy from among them. You know what that is? That's, no, that's merciless. Uh, uh, and so you know what that is? That's pride. Let me tell you something. You know what? God resisted the proud but give a grace to the humble. Amen? Look at what it says at the end of this uh, uh, psalm here, a uh, 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 proverb, rather. Look at verse 32. If thou hast done foolishly in lifting up thyself, or if thou hast brought evil, lay thine hand upon thy mouth. Amen. You know what? Hey, uh, it's time for the proud to get right. Amen. Amen. This morning I want to preach on real briefly. Look and live. Look and and live. Again, the Bible clearly shows us up that Christ is the one that has to be lifted up. And he's the only one that uh, uh, in lifting him up can lift you up. Amen. Because Jesus did say, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men. Amen. So I hate to say it, but a lot of churches today, you know what? The music is the draw. You know what? I'm not against music. Amen. Uh, but Christ must be the draw. Amen. If somebody's going to get help, they got to see Jesus for who he is. Amen. Some people, you know, the building is a draw because they got, you know, they got a nice conference room. They got a nice foyer. I'm not against uh, nice buildings. Amen. But you know what? Christ has got to be, Christ has got to get you in the body. Amen. 
Amen? He's got to get you in the body. It's got to be more than the building that draws you. It's got to be Jesus Christ. Amen? They might have, you know, they might have, you know, a nice pews. They might have nice whatever. The, the choir, the, the singing, you know what I mean? The, you might like it. But let me tell you, ultimately, in order for you to be drawn up and lifted up, the Lord Jesus Christ has to be lifted up in the service. Amen? He has to have the preeminence. Amen? And you got to look that way. Amen? You got to look to live. Amen? You got to look to live. All right, so I'm going to give you three things about this. Uh, uh, I, 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 before I get it, I, I do like what Isaiah saw. Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1, you know what he said? He said, I saw the Lord uh, lifted up one day. He said, you know what? He was high and lifted up. And you know what he said I saw when I saw? He said, his train filled the temple. Amen. And he said, you know what happened? He said, uh, he said it was bright as, as, as the sun. And he said, you know what? He said, angels. He said, thousands were about him. And he said, there were several angels. You know what all they did? He said, they flew about him and saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God. Amen. That's what you need to get a glimpse of. Amen. You need to get a glimpse of somebody high and lifted up if you're going to be lifted. Amen. Somebody, let me tell you something. You can't, you, you're not going to get a glimpse or hope of being high and lifted up if you see somebody just on the same level as you. Amen. They got to be higher than you. So what's your, what's your got to do? First of all, let me tell you something. You got to be looking at the right direction. Amen. Somebody said you can find, uh, and I remember they said you can find more money looking down. Amen. But let me tell you something. If you're going to find salvation, you better be looking up. Amen. Uh, go, if you will, to John chapter 3. John chapter 3 and look at verse 14. John, John 3 and verse 14. Look what it says. People looking down, they looking over, they looking under, they looking through instead of looking up. Amen. You know what? The problem, let me tell you something. A lot of people's problems, you know what? They are more than physical. Physical are the symptoms. The real problem is spiritual. Amen. Yeah. You know what a lot of medicines do? Medicines do? Uh, they mask the real problem. Amen. You can, get, you can get a medicine, you know, it can mask pain so you don't feel the pain. You can get a medicine, you know, so it can, it can kind of uh, uh, stop, so to speak. Let me just, it's like blood pressure medicine. Blood pressure medicine, you know, it's not a cure. You know what? Guess what you're supposed to do? You're supposed to correct your diet, amen? You're supposed to take the blood pressure medicine and, and diet and exercise. You know what a lot of us do? We take the blood pressure medicine. Oh, man, give me extra. I'm on blood pressure medicine now. Give me an extra slice of bacon, amen? I've said amen loud enough for all of y'all. Amen. But you're supposed to do diet and exercise. Amen. And what is what all it's doing, it's masking a real problem. The real problem is what? Diet and exercise. Amen. All right. <clears throat> so mask. But you've got to be looking in the right direction. You've got to be looking up. Look at John chapter 3 and verse 14. Your Bible says, and Mo as Moses was lifted up, uh, lifted up rather the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Amen. Like I was saying, Jesus Christ has got to be lifted up for you to be lifted. Let me tell you something. This world is a quagmire of sin. Amen. Let me tell you something. You got to watch where you walk. You got to watch what you see. Amen. I mean, it's rampant. It's open now. As a matter of fact, you know what, folks? Not ashamed of it. Amen. The things that people used to be ashamed of, you know what? It's promoted. Yes, sir. It's promoted. Uh, evil is good and good is evil. Amen. Let me tell you, you got to look up. If you're going to ever get saved, you got to look up to the right direction. You got When you look up, you don't see some things. First of all, you know what you'll see? You'll see your maker. Amen. You'll see your maker. Go to Psalm 121. Real quick here. Psalm, we're going to be in Psalm 121 or Psalm 123. Psalm 121. When you look up, you'll see your maker. I had uh, my grandsons. Uh, and I, I don't care this on tape. I got my grandsons and they were on the roof with me yesterday. And I told you, I sent them up. I said, you know what? I said, this is going to be a memorable moment. They'll always remember when we went on the roof with Grandpa. Right? I said, they're going to stand with me. I said, we just weekend. We don't want it to be boring. We want it to be exciting. I said, and so we sent that letter, I uh, sent that text to their mama that every, uh, everything's okay with Grandpa. You know, it's one of those moments like, don't tell your mother. <laughs> Right? But through, uh, we got the modern day of uh, a video and everything else and all this kind of stuff and pictures. I was able to send them pictures, three different shots. You know what I mean? And each shot, we made sure, I, and towards boys, I said, look at these shots. I said, which one looks the most dangerous? So we went to the, the least dangerous, the middle dangerous, to the most dangerous. And I said, they were like, and they, they was all like, yeah! 
<laughs> but we was high on that roof. And I remember one of them, as it was coming up up that ladder, we got to the edge of the roof. He said, Mother, this looks different when you get up here. And, and so I said, y'all crawl up to the, the t top of the roof now and go sit up, go sit up there on the peak. I said, I said and so then I, t I was telling him, I said, now put your feet on the other side when I take this picture and go down. And I went inside the house and I got the grandma. And I, I said, I'm talking about being up high. And I, 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 I went and, and I said, I said, Selena, I said, have you seen our, our grandsons? She was like, aren't they outside with you? I said, they were. I said, I don't know where they went. So I got seen, and she came running outside looking around. And I was, I was like, and I looked over the neighbor's fence like this. And I was looking around, and, and uh, uh, Jaden was looking around. And I said, I looked up, and she looked up, and she just went. <laughs> They're like, hi, Grandma. <laughs> so that was a highlight of the day, being on the roof. You know what I mean? And they, 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 were, they, were, all, they were all like, this is going to give my mom a heart attack. This is going to be so great, right? And I told him, I said, wait. And that's when we texted. I said, wait, wait. And under one minute, got a text back. Record time. Amen. You can tell them that you can text some of these people all you want to, and you never, but when you send a text like that, you get a response. Amen. But you know what? Hey, it's different when you're looking at stuff from that view. Amen. We can see that we can see three houses down. We can see their scoutmaster's yard. We can see, you know, we can see in the backyard and the other places. We can see all that on the ground and everything else. It's different. Let me tell you something. You know what? The Lord, and guess what? You got to look to the maker. You know why? Because God can see your problem for what it is. Amen. Too many people, you know what? Guess what? They can only see their problem uh, measuring with somebody else's problem. Let me tell you, you need somebody higher than that to help you out. Amen. You know why? Everybody got their own problems. Amen. Let me tell you something, if you're looking to somebody, you know what, just right above you, you know what, they may not be able to help you. God said this right here, uh, come unto me, all ye in labor and heavy laid, and I will give you what? Rest. You know what, your maker is a problem solver. Amen. Especially that problem of salvation. Amen. Look to your maker, look at Psalm 121. Look at verse 1. Psalm 121, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help, my help cometh from the Lord, watch this, which made heaven and earth. Amen. There's just somebody that made heaven and earth, you know what? They can do something about your problem. Amen. Amen. Look at this. Uh, go to Psalm 123. He's the maker. Uh, he's the master. Look at Psalm 123. Psalm 123, look at verse 1 again. Psalm 123, unto thee lift up mine eyes, O thou that dwellest, notice, in the heaven. Behold, as the eyes of the servant look unto the hand uh, of their master, and as the eyes of the maiden unto the hand of their mistress, so our eyes wait upon the Lord, our God, until we have... Uh, have mercy upon us. Again, notice, he's the guy, he's the master, it says. Amen. The master gives down to the servant. Is that right? You got, you got to be looking at the right direction. Too many people, you know why they can't find help? They're looking at the wrong place. Let me tell you something. Drugs are not going to help you. It's just going to get you deeper down. Drink is not going to help you. It's just going to draw you further down. The master who made the heavens, who made the sea, he can help you. You got to be looking at the right place. And then notice again, Psalm 123. You know what? Let me tell you something. When you're looking at the right direction, uh, when you're looking up, you're looking up at the maker, the master, and you know what he provides? Look at verse 3 of Psalm 123. Have mercy upon us, O Lord. Have mercy upon us, for we are filled with contempt. You know what the Lord can have? Mercy. You know what? Sometimes, you know what? When you're looking at somebody else, sometimes, you know what they do? They look down at you. Amen. When you're in, hey, hey, when the folks are in trouble and you bring your trouble to some people, you know what? They will look down upon you. Yeah, they will. But you know what God said? I'll have mercy upon you. Amen. See, God knows the frailty of our flesh unlike we know the frailty of our flesh. Let me tell you something. You need somebody, you know, like Jesus Christ. You know what he said? He's touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Amen. That's what you need. You don't need somebody, you know what, to say, you know what, I, I, you know what I did? I pulled myself up by my bootstraps. Let me tell you something. You can get where you, a, plop, a situation where this right here, friend, you don't have no boots. How are you going to pull yourself up by your bootstraps? Amen. Amen. It's hard to pull yourself up by your bootstraps when you don't have no boots. My, my grandson at that time, they went out there and got in the, the really muddy, muddy uh, swamp and everything else. And the only way to get out is to come out of your boots. 
Sometimes you got to come out of them boots. You can't pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Amen. You got to be looking in the right direction if you're going to get help. Amen. You can't be looking to Hollywood. You got, God help you trying to look at the Hollywood. They need help. Amen. Somebody said the soap operas, and I like what a preacher said a lot of times. You know why they soap operas? Why they call them soap operas? Because they need to be cleaned up. Amen. You can't be looking at that stuff for help. You got, watch this, if all creation, listen to me, y'all, if all the birds look to God and he helps them, amen, the Bible, doesn't the Bible say you are more valued than many sparrows? And I told you before, I see individuals all the time. I was with the contractor. We was driving around looking for some, some uh, uh, shingles and everything else. And we came across three individuals over on 17 and some different spots in that area. And they all had signs talking about help, you know, food and everything else. I've never seen one of God's creation, a bird, a dolphin, a duck. I ain't never seen them with a sign say we'll work for food. Why? Because God, their maker, is taking care of them. Amen. How many pass, how many cars you think pass by at that individual each day without helping him? Amen. And I'm trying to tell you this right here. Friend, you're looking at the wrong place for help. You got to start looking up. Amen. For your maker. He will help you. Amen. Get your eyes in the right direction. Second of all, you know what? You got to be looking to the right person. Go, if you will, back to John. Go to John chapter 12. And look what it says. Not only the right position, the right person. John chapter 12. Look at this. And John chapter 12, look at verse 32. John 12, 32. Look what it says here. John 12, 32, it says, And if I be lifted, uh, if and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, uh, will draw all men unto me. You know what that is? That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You got to be looking at the right person. Too many people, you know what? They looking at all kind of different people. Let me tell you, I was talking to the, uh, uh, the contractor the other day, and I was telling him, I said, you know what? We, we went down, uh, um, um, I can't remember that road. You go down 17, and then you kind of veer off to the right, and it's a really funny road because you, you keep going, but there's a, a, a road that comes into it. We used to take that road. Uh, brother, uh, uh, I remember brother had to uh, do the jail ministry. Brother, uh, Tommy, Johnny Hands that got us in the jail ministry. That road, what's the name of that road? Mills B. Lane. We going out Mills B. Uh, we was, was Mills B. Lane, and we saw a Buddha, a Buddha on somebody's porch, right? Uh, we went down 17, and we saw a Buddha, a big Buddha, on Highway 80. We went on Highway 80, we saw the big Buddha, right? And I was telling him, I said, you think that Buddha sitting over there that can help you? I said, that's wrong. He said, no. He said, all they, he said, and he was laughing. He says, all he got is a big belly. <laughs> he said, all these guys, that, I said that right. I said, you think Confucius can help you? I said, you think Muhammad can help you? I said, they all in the grave. I said, only Jesus Christ has risen from the grave. Amen. I said, somebody risen from the grave can help you stay out of the grave. Amen. I said, you got to look to the right person. Uh, by looking to Jesus Christ, you know what? You'll see, you'll see what you're supposed to see. Uh, by looking to Jesus Christ, he's the right person. You know what you'll see? You'll see the work of Christ. What is that? You know what? That he, he died for your sin. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Look at this. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Watch this. You'll see the work of Christ. Here it is. Uh, 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 verse uh, 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 20. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. Though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead. Be reconciled to God. Here it is. Verse 20. Uh, for him. Or for he rather. Had made him. That's Jesus. To be sin for us. Who knew no sin. That we might be made the righteousness of Christ. You know who died for your sin? Jesus Christ. You know who did something about your sin? Jesus Christ. Amen. No, the mother people, you know what? They just tell you the way. Jesus tells you he is the way. I am the way, the truth, the light. No man coming to the Father but by me. There's one meaning between God and men. It's the man Christ Jesus, right? You see, you see this right here. Uh, the work of Christ was his conviction. He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw on me. You know what it says over there in John, uh, five, uh, John 12, 33? He says, this spake he of his crucifixion. That's the work of Christ. He came to die on the cross for your sin. Watch this. When you look at the right person, you know, you see the work of Christ, you'll see the wooing of Christ. Go to John chapter 3 and verse 6, uh, uh, John 3 verse 16. The wooing of Christ. Uh, and John 3 16, look what it says here. 
You know what? You know what wooing does? You know, you know what wooing is? Woo, wooing is like coaxing. You know what that does? Look at John 3.16. You know what wooing does? We, we talk about the wooing of the Holy Ghost. You know what? Uh, you, anybody know what the job of the Holy Ghost is? Uh, the Bible points out one of his greatest uh, specific jobs. When he's coming to the world, what's he supposed to do? Uh, reprove the world of what? Sin, Sin righteousness, and judgment. So uh, his primary uh, function of the Holy Ghost is to bring you under what? Conviction. You know what the wooing is? That's, that's that bringing you under Holy Ghost conviction. See, you see the work of Christ, and a lot of people, you are, they will acknowledge that Jesus died. They'll say, you talk to them and say, Jesus died on the cross. They will shake their head in agreement. They'll say, you'll say, Jesus died in your place. They will shake their head in agreement. They said Jesus died for the sin of the old. We can quote John 3, 16 right here. It says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not a Son to the world to condemn the world, but the world through Him might be saved. Amen. They will agree with that. But here comes the wooing. Right here, verse 18. He that believeth on Him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he believed not in the name of the only begotten Son. That's where the Holy Ghost comes in. He starts wooing you about your need of believing that. See, you can acknowledge that it took place. But I want to ask you something. Are you trusting it for your salvation? You can acknowledge that it took place historically, that it's in the Bible. You can acknowledge, say, I was brought up knowing that truth. But do you trust in that truth? See, that's the work of the Spirit of God. He begins to woo you and convict you in your soul that, you know what? Him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him it is what? Sin. And Jesus said, if you die in your sin, whither I go, you cannot come. I know a lot of long pe young people, they've been raised in church. They know the truth of Jesus Christ, but they haven't trusted that truth. It only really dawns upon them when they, when they think they're about to die. That conviction that they've been under comes to surface. I remember my cousin one time, uh, my aunt uh, was messing with her because she swallowed a penny. And she called my eyes and said, this child done swallowed a penny. And I heard in the background, tell me, oh, mama, I need to get saved. I need to get saved. And she's like, Chris, what do I do? I was like, ain't nothing much we can do. I said, you heard of lead poisoning? I said, penny poisoning is even worse. And she had her on speaker for her. Oh, she was all bent out of shape. She was wanting to pray. And I, that showed she'd been under conviction. Amen. A lot of people, you know, that's what you find out. All of a sudden, you get the phone call. They want to talk, like Richard was mentioning. All of a sudden, the, it's cancer or, or some health concern, and they want to all they, they want to talk to you about Jesus. That show they've been under the wooing of the Spirit of God. But it takes that event to bring it out. And let me tell you some friend. Let me tell you, don't wait to some tragic event uh, to trust Jesus Christ. The wooing of the Spirit of God means God is dealing with you right now. Amen. Like the Bible says, today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Amen? Amen. Don't harden your heart. Let me tell you something. You've got to be looking at the right person. That's Jesus Christ. The Bible will show you his conviction. Let me tell you something. It'll show you the wooing of Christ. It'll bring you under a place. I talk about his crucifixion. It'll bring you under a place of conviction. Let me tell you something. You need that conviction. Amen? You need that conviction. Amen? And then you know what? If you're looking to the right person, if you look like... Uh, there's a song that says, uh, Look, Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of this world will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Amen? Let me tell you something. And when you start looking at the right person, you'll see the wealth of Jesus Christ. Amen? You'll see all that he has that will be attributed to you. Look at it in John chapter 3. Again, and look at verse, uh, 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 verse 15. It says, uh, 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 yeah, verse 15, it says, uh, Whosoever believes in him should not perish. Look, here's the wealth. But... Uh, perish, but have what? Eternal life. Let me tell you something. You can't put a, you can't put a price on that, can you? Eternal. Eternal. That's like a guy said, all right. He said, he rubbed the lamp, genie came out. He said, oh, genie, genie. I get three wishes. Genie said, no, you don't. Economy's bad and everything else. He said, he said you get one wish. 
one. That's all. And the guy was like, man. Wow. One? He said, one. He said, so you better make it good. And the guy was like, man. He said, I wish that all my wishes come true. <laughs> he said, you can't do that. He said, yes, I can. You said I get one wish. He said, but that, he said, that means it'll last for, uh, for all time. He said, I know. I'm trying to tell you this right here. The wealth of Jesus Christ, you know what it is? It's for all time. It's for eternity. There's nothing. Everything we see right now and understand, it's all temporal. Amen. He's talking about, you know what? Eternal life. Amen. That's the wealth of Christ. But you know what? You won't, you won't see that if you're looking at the wrong person. Let me tell you something. There's so many different religions. You know what they'll tell you? That everything they're offering, you know what? It's predicated on what you're doing or how hard you work. And you know what? The sad commentary is this right at the end of it nobody really knows if you got it or not if or if it's ever enough the Bible clearly tells this right here he that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out and he said I will give you eternal life friend let me tell you something that's it Amen. eternal life you gotta be looking at the right person though you gotta be looking at Jesus the right work of Jesus Christ that will show you his conviction. The warring of the Spirit of God that will bring you under conviction. And the wealth of Christ, you know what? That will show you this right here. All that God, you know what that will lead to? When you really look on it and trust in it, that will lead you to a place we call conversion. Amen. But you know what? Your heart's got to be in the right place. Your heart's got to be in the right place. Go if you will. I want to show you something. Go if you will to Proverbs chapter 2. Proverbs chapter 2. You got to be in the wrong place. You know what that is? Your heart's got to be lifted, but you know what? Your pride's got to be humble. Your heart's got to be lifted, but your pride's got to be humble. You know, too many people, again, you know why they can't get, you know what some people think, oh, oh, I deserve that. Let me tell them, that's the problem. You don't deserve it. Amen. That's a, I told you, I, I told y'all, uh, uh, I think I said it uh, Wednesday night or whatever. Uh, the, there's a difference between karma and grace. Grace is, karma is getting what you deserve. Grace is getting what you don't deserve. Amen. Amen. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not about the karma. I'm about grace. Amen. Aren't you? I don't want the karma. I don't, that's not what I want. I want the grace. Y'all can, y'all, this generation, y'all can trade in y'all grace for karma. Go right ahead. <laughs> but Proverbs chapter 2, look at verse 3. It says, Yea, if thou, list, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasure, sh then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of of God. Let me tell you something. You got to have the right heart about this thing. Too many people, you know what? They got this attitude that, you know what? God owes me or the world owes me. Let me tell you something. Guess what? Nobody owes you anything. Amen? Your heart can be lifted up, but your uh, attitude's got to be one of humility. You can be lifted up uh, with a heart of, uh, 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 with your voice lifted up, heartfelt, but it can't be lifted up with pride. God, I told you before, God resisted the pride, but giveth grace to the humble. That's James 4.10. Too many people, you know what? They want to lift, uh, uh, lift up to God like, you know, God owes them. I told you, I hate to say the charismatic got so many, they warped the scripture so bad, they got where two or more gathered in my name, there in my, in the midst, as touching anything. And somebody said, that's a blank check to get anything you want from God. God ain't giving you... Let me tell you something. God knows he dealing with sinners. You think he's going to give you a blank check? Let me tell you something. He kept, Adam, after Adam and Eve sinned, he put uh, cherubims of the, the tree of knowledge, you know, it's, uh, of eternal life, so they wouldn't live forever, so they wouldn't get to that. You think he, you think he giving you a blank check? We won't give our relatives a blank check. Shows you how messed up that is. No, 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 friend. You got to have a heart that's humble, Right? You got to limit to some God's got to see that humility in, in your heart. Too many people, you know what? They again, they they they, they got this coming forward to God as this it's it, it's some kind of uh, thing where where we're doing God a favor. No, God is doing you this thing called forgiveness. No favor. 
Let me tell you something. If you don't praise God, guess what? He, he won't lack praise. If you, don't, if you don't give to the work of Jesus Christ, so the ministry of the gospel will go forth, guess what? Uh, God will still get it done. His word won't go out void. Amen? If, if you won't come to church and everything, God still won't lack people. People got this thing that if I don't join up, if I don't get in, you know, God's going to lack. Let me tell you something, friend. The second you leave this life and you fall into the hands of the living God, amen, because as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment, you're going to realize this right here. You know, you should have been a whole lot more humble in your attitude when approaching God that now has your very soul in his hand as he has your very life in his hand. You just didn't realize it. Go to James. Look what James says about this thing. James chapter 2. See, I'm a, I'm a preacher. People find out you're a preacher. You know what? If they ain't been to church for a while, then they come up to you. James chapter 1, rather. They come up to you and they say, I went to church this Sunday. And if I don't, if I don't give the right acknowledgement, if I don't say, oh, you did? You went to church? Oh, I'm so glad you went to church. I was like, but if I give them something like this right here, about time. They're like, see there? I found it went to church doing something good for God. I was like, you ain't doing nothing for good for God. Doing something good. I found it went to church so I could tell you I went to church. And then when I come, uh, you and what you say, you say, fine, about time. I was like, what about, okay. What am I supposed to say? They said, you're supposed to say, well, you did good. Uh, did you get a blessing? Was God a blessing? Did, did, was your soul lifted up? Uh, I said, oh, okay. Well, let me, uh, start again. Ask, uh, tell me you went to church again. <laughs> and so when they, they tell me, I said, oh, did you do good? And they said, now you're just mocking me. <laughs> I said, I'm trying to tell you this, friend. It's not about going to church. Amen. It's about receiving what God said. You know what God said? God said, I want you to receive my son, Jesus Christ, as your Savior. He died for your sin. He was buried, rose again the third day for your justification. Believe that. Trust that. And you and me can have a relationship. And guess what? It won't be on a weekend basis. Guess what? I'll be your father. You'll be my son. And we can fellowship each and every day and especially on Sunday. It'll be real. Look at James chapter 1. Look what James says. James chapter 1. Verse 19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. Amen. Amen. How does it say receive? Receive it with meekness. Not, I know that already. I know all that. I really don't need that much. Let me tell you something, friend. When you're a sinner, you need everything that God can give you. He's trying to give you it all in Jesus Christ. But your heart's got to be in the right place. Go you book to the book of Matthew. Look at Matthew. Watch what Matthew says here. Look at this thing and I'll close. Your heart's got to be in the right place. You can't be lifted up in pride. You've got to be in the right place. Matthew chapter 13, look at this, verse 15. This is what Jesus said, so I know it's true. Matthew 13, 15. This is what Jesus said about the people he preached to. You think he preached what's right? I think he did. You think he preached it with a heart full of love and desire for them? I think he did. You think he preached the appropriate message at the appropriate time? I think he did. But look what he said. Verse 15, this people's heart is wax gross. Their ears are dull of hearing. Their eyes they have closed. Lest any time I sh they should see with their eyes, they hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and be converted, and, sh uh, and should be, be converted, rather, and I should heal them. But look at it, verse 15, 16. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye have hear, and have not heard them. 
uh, uh, hear ye therefore the parable of the sword. I'm saying this right. You know what? It, it's determined on the, on the position of your heart. If your heart is lifted up in pride, you know what? You will not see Jesus Christ for who he really is. I want to ask you something. Where are you looking at? Where are you looking to? If you keep looking to, to man and you keep getting the same answer, somebody said doing the same thing over and over again to get the same result and expecting a different result, it's called insanity. The Bible says, look to Jesus Christ. Amen. He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men. Right? If I look to Jesus Christ, I see his work of crucifixion for my sin. I feel the Spirit of God, the wooing of the Holy Ghost of God, bringing me to a point, a place in my life to believe that. And the last of all, you know what I got? I got to trust in that. Amen. Not just look to it, trust in it. Have you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior this morning? I hope you have. I hope you're just not out on the outside looking and not living because you haven't trusted for Jesus Christ as your Savior. Let's all stand for a word of prayer. We'd be dismissed. Look and live. Amen. There's a song we sing. We're not going to sing it this morning. There's a song we sing. It says he's recording his word. Hallelujah, hallelujah that you only look and live. Look and live my brother live. Look to Jesus Christ and live. Amen. Look and live.